So I just want to say, before I formally start, three comments about what Hugh said, and particularly the questions that were asked. There was one fantastic question. I would put all my money on the question you asked, which is the connection between the rational, the technical, the objective, and what really drives the world, which is how we feel, how we think, how we behave, how we deny, how we all those other things. So great question. The second question is our human agency, not just as scientists or whoever we think we are in this room, but as human agents. So one of the other things that, that I find myself saying a lot, and I urge myself to remember this, I remember what Hugh said about 14 letters to an MP, OK? So one person's a crank, OK? Two, two people is a pressure group, and 14 people is public opinion, OK? So numbers absolutely matter. And if you find yourself not writing to people of more influence than you are, we are not doing our job well enough. Okay, doing nothing is extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous. And don't berate your MP. The most powerful thing you can say to your MP or any person in influence is, I am concerned, I would like to help, what help do you need? You will never get rebuffed if you say to someone, how can I help you? Okay, you'll never get rejected. It is very difficult to reject an offer of help, okay? And the third thing I would say about what we heard about Hugh and the responses from the audience is this. Don't underestimate the power of human conflict. Okay, and it's not climate change that's going to kill you. It's not climate change that's going to kill me. It's not climate change that's going to kill your children, your loved ones. It's what climate change does to us that make us kill each other. That's the issue. Okay? We're by far the most dangerous species on the planet far worse than mosquitoes, okay? So remember that. Okay, phew, I feel better now. Oh, God. Right, so I'm just going to spend just a few minutes talking about the role of the, the health sector in this country, not worldwide, just the health system, health professionals, and the code I use for that is the NHS. Has anybody heard of, anybody heard of the NHS? Okay, <laughs> fantastic, good. So I'm going to in five ways. Uh, the message, the message, the message the educational power, the research power, the size of the NHS, and the credibility, like it or not, of health systems, health professionals. Um, so don't forget climate change is a health issue. The reason air quality is much better in American cities now than it used to be is not because air quality was messaged as an environmental issue. It was because air quality was messaged, framed as a health issue. Stop talking about the environment. The environment is detached. If we say to people climate change is an environmental issue, people say, well, that's OK. And I, I, I'll show I, after the latest IPCC thing, a well-known guardian, oops, sorry, forget that bit, a well-known journalist of a broadsheet um, phoned me up and said, hey, David, it's really extraordinary. I, I just learned to IPCC that um, I knew that climate change was an environmental issue. No one had ever told me, though, it was a health issue. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? You should, you should not be shocked by that, because that's how people, we compartmentalize our lives, OK? So, so resist using the word environment if you can, OK? So it's very, very important um, that, you know, we have 30,000 early deaths a year due to air pollution, at least in this country. If we had 30,000 excess deaths in this country due to water, the quality of our drinking water, there'd be revolution. So why do we accept this? How do we accept this? We accept it today because it was true yesterday. It's, it's normal. Um, so what we have is the fact that we have, you know, shed loads of evidence about how it could be better. So climate change is not just about the environment. It's a health issue. So please remember that. And uh, there are lots of wonderful things on the right, OK? Not the things on the left. So you need the shock and awe of the data that Hugh presented. You need to alert people. You need to make, make people aware. But you need rescue. You need active hope. You need there are solutions. 
But those solutions will not come passively. They will not come by us all sitting on the sidelines. So here's an interesting message. So that is called good framing. Now, I'll tell you a story about this. This was in a Shire County Hall office. I was asked to give, go and give a talk to all the councillors about the role of health and wellbeing boards. This was in the foyer. I took a photograph. I put it in my slide set. I went upstairs. I addressed the council. I said, this is fantastic. Well done for framing this. 10 out of 10 for framing this. 1 out of 10 for not having a bicycle shed in your car park. OK? So feeling strongly is not enough. Saying good things is not enough. It's a good start, but it's not a great finish. OK? So the education obligation of the health service is this, that um, I'm trying to think how many people we employ. We employ 1.4 million people in the NHS and about nearly 3 million people in the health and social care system widely. That includes people in nursing schools, medical schools, social care. That's 9% of the workforce in every town, village, and community. This is a citizenship in itself. Forget about the public. We have the public within the health system as members of staff. We are highly represented in that sense. We have 2.2 million students in the UK higher education sector. So together, between the health system and the higher education sector, you've got a lot of civic representation there. So I can tell you that the Royal Colleges that I work with, those that have got sustainability in their curriculum, permission this as a dimension of quality. And those that don't think it's something that tree huggers do in the corner. Okay, you have got to mainstream this issue as a dimension of quality. Thirdly, the research needs. So one of the other things is a huge amount of research monies go in to the research world, sometimes in a multidisciplinary sense, through the health and care social sector. So many of you will know what triple bottom line stuff is, the fact that we have to reap the, the sweet spot between environmental benefits, between social benefits, and between economic benefits. That sweet spot, that triple bottom line, that there is no part of the civic structure, there is no part of the public sector that's better suited to sweat that triple bottom line than the healthcare sector exactly because of what Hugh said about the multiple co-benefits of taking action now. People are not interested in climate change in 2050. They're interested in their futures now. You know, talking about climate change is like talking about warm sick. It is not a great appealing thing to talk about. But if you talk about what hopes do you have for you and your family and your community, your education, this, the, the public realm about you, you have a much better chance of engaging. This is a real win for the health sector. The health, I mean, we call it health sector. It's not a health sector at all. It's an illness sector. You know that. Um, you know, we monetize illness. We monetize illness through, largely through waste. You know, one of the many things the NHS does really, really well is waste. Massive waste. You would never buy shares in the NHS if you saw how many pharmaceuticals we wasted. What percentage of pharmaceuticals manufactured around the world are end up, what percentage have a positive therapeutic benefit? Now, that is a question that is not known, but it's what I call a killer statistic, like the fact that we've just completed some research that 4% of all traffic on the road is on NHS business. 4% of all traffic on the road is on NHS business. You, you're very welcome to tweet that, because you can measure the particulate matter, the knocks, everything about it. And one of the things that I did at medical school was to metaphorically take an oath that you do no harm. The NHS should do no harm. Okay, That should be one of its overriding principles of quality. Um, so the other thing is the health system is full of very good people. And we beat that goodness out of them when they step in through the door every, every morning and every evening on the night shift. Okay, We do not capitalize on the wonderful brilliant values that people bring to work, OK? I can tell you what year a medical student is through first year medical student or nursing student, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, full of beans, ready to change the world. We spend about six years beating it out of them. Isn't it great, isn't it? That's what socialization is. Um, what does that say? Oh, yeah, so, so how do we improve the communities in terms of you know, the NHS? The NHS. Um, I'll show you in a minute, it's got a procurement budget. Do you know how much we spend? We're the biggest buyer of food in the country. 
we have a procurement budget of 21 billion pounds. If I gave you 21 billion pounds and I said, you're not changing the world, you're not doing your job, okay? If you can't change the world with a 21 billion pound procurement budget, if you cannot put in every contract for every service and every good, you purchase as a major part of the public sector a, word, a phrase like, we expect you to take your social obligations to the communities you purport to serve seriously, and we reserve the right not to undertake business with people who do otherwise, you need to get out of the job. That's, you're not doing your job properly. And we do that in the unit I run with everything. So when we had um, someone um, wanting to write our website, we asked them that question. They said, no, we don't do that. I said, well, there's the door. Next. Okay. You have got to use the levers at your disposal to make the change you wish to see for you, your families, and for your next generation. We could do more as a good employer. The NHS is not a great employer, but we could do, we employ million, we put a, a lot of very low paid workers in the NHS. We could do a huge amount by just being a good employer. We could do a huge amount by being a good procurer. There are wonderful, inspiring case studies of how this is done throughout the health sector. So, and you need to measure things. So here we measure the ecological footprint of the NHS. We've done it for 10 years, and we, we are on track for reducing it by what the law says and what the science says by 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not about efficiency. This is not about making what we do now a little bit better. This is about completely changing the business model of a large public sector, and that's how we do it. Size and spread, as I said, we are very big, and we're spread into every community. Um, credibility. We wouldn't, they wouldn't have used that if they didn't believe what doctors said. So I thought doctors were at the top of the uh, league in terms of credibility. I was wrong, actually. It's nurses. So if we do not use the power of that, this is not about health and hazard. This is about health and opportunities. We will make a huge, huge disservice if future generations say to us, you knew so much and you did so little. This is happening on our watch. It's not a future thing. It's now. Thank you.